We can no longer count on them to protect us. Uh, good morning, everybody. It's Cruise Man. Just getting ready to head out and run a little errand. I'm going to be riding the bike over to Coppell, Texas. If this is your first time to watch one of my motovlogs, welcome to Cruise Man's Garage Motovlogs. We appreciate you joining us today. Please take a second to click that little subscribe button and don't forget the little bell icon if you want YouTube to notify you of new videos as they come out. It's about 10.45 in the morning, 10.42 actually. Friday afternoon, or Friday morning I should say. It is about 85 degrees right now and it will get up into the mid to high 90s later today. So our beautiful spring weather that I've been bragging about so much over the last few motovlogs is short-lived and summer is definitely here. I will be uh, doing a road trip out to West Texas next week and of course I'll be motovlogging from that road trip and it would not surprise me if uh, we see a hundred degrees while I'm on that trip. So I'm heading to Coppell today to pick up a new concealed carry weapon. If those of you who uh, do concealed carry, if you're interested in more information on the uh, handgun that I'm getting, please put it in the comments and I'll uh, maybe talk about it in an upcoming motovlog. This is a new, uh, kind of a new paradigm for me because I've never, I, I do have a concealed carry license, but I've never actually carried. But with all the events of the last couple of weeks, I think it's become pretty obvious that uh, we're on our own now as far as protecting ourselves and our property. Um, the police, as much as I admire and respect and support police, I think it's pretty obvious that we can no longer count on them to protect us. So, I don't think it's their fault. I think a lot of politicians that control the police departments uh, have decided that anarchy is the order of the day in many of our cities. And I'm not going to get into that too heavily. So anyway, let's not talk about that. The topic of today's motovlog is insurance. Motorcycle insurance. I've been wanting to talk about this for quite a while. And I want all of you, uh, if you're interested, to put in the comments down below what your experience has been with motorcycle insurance. Now, my previous insurance company uh, was Progressive. I used to have Progressive for several years. And then they really started raising their rates. And I think it was when I got my 2012 Goldwing uh, is when I really noticed they were trying to jump my insurance rates quite a bit. So I started shopping around and I ended up going with Dairyland. And I never made a claim on a progressive policy, just so you know. And I think at one point, my progressive insurance was pretty low, maybe about $350, $400 a year. And uh, currently I'm with Dairyland, and I'm going to give you a rundown of my insurance policy and what it entails, and I'll tell you what I pay. And I'll tell you what my experience has been with Dairyland. And so far, it's been a good experience. In fact, I really don't have any complaints at all. 
Now, when we start talking about insurance policies and insurance rates, insurance rates will vary dramatically from one state to the next. So there's no way, just because I'm in Texas, if I get a certain insurance rate, that you're going to get the same rate I get because they do vary dramatically from state to state. And of course, your driving record, there's other factors to consider. I'm gonna close my face shield. Seems a little windy. It's a little windier today than normal. My policy, I pay $550 a year this last year. And I have all the maximum coverage on liability, which I believe is $250,000 and $500,000, both for property and bodily injury. <clears throat> of course, I have collision insurance and comprehensive. And I believe my comprehensive has a $500 deductible. And for some reason, I have $60,000 of comprehensive coverage. I'm not sure why it's that high. Because there's no way my motorcycle, with all of its accessories, even with the trailer, would be $60,000. But maybe that was the minimum they offered, and that's what I had to get. I'm not sure. I also learned when I was looking at my policy the other day to get these numbers that I do not have uninsured motorist. And I was kind of surprised by that. So I have contacted Dairyland to get a quote on what it's going to cost to add uninsured motorist. That's a very important thing to have on a policy, especially in Texas, <clears throat> because we have a lot of illegal aliens here or undocumented immigrants, and they do not have insurance. And so, as I understand it, and I may not understand it, if you're in the insurance business, maybe you can explain this more clearly in the comments down below. If I were to be uh, struck by a vehicle operated by someone without insurance, my collision would cover the damage, but it would go against my insurance rates in the future because it would show up as a claim. Because my insurance company has no other insurance company to subrogate or to collect from. Assuming the accident was not my fault. So uninsured motorist in my is I don't even I've never been told this I'm just trying to deduce why it's different than collision but I'm assuming that uninsured motorist would keep that claim from counting against me on my insurance it wouldn't show up as a claim against my collision just you know that's just my guess but I always carry the maximum liability limits because, you know, you could run into a the back of a Bentley, <laughs> you know, a $380,000 Bentley, and, uh, you know, if you only have $25,000 of liability coverage on property damage, that wouldn't, it wouldn't even come close. Now, I do not have bodily injury for me. I do for a passenger, but I don't for me because my health insurance would cover me for any personal injuries that I sustain. So there's not really any reason. If I didn't have health insurance, obviously I would have that, but my health insurance would cover any injuries to me. I also have an optional equipment rider on my policy, which is an additional $5,000 worth of coverage. And that would actually uh, be to cover the cost of my trailer should it become damaged uh, or any accessories that I've added to the motorcycle. The trailer is not covered under the normal policy. You have to have that under an accessory policy. 
So anyway, I'll be curious to hear what your thoughts are on who you use for insurance. Now, I will tell you I've been happy with Dairyland. I did have a, an incident a few years ago on a different Goldwing. Some of you may know about it. Where I uh, struck some road debris on the highway. I was going about 60, 60 or 65 miles an hour when I hit it. And it was a piece of scrap iron. And that scrap iron, uh, obviously, uh, when my front tire hit it, I, I thought I thought for sure I'd be going down. It's a miracle I did, and I was able to keep the bike upright. <clears throat> but that scrap iron struck the underside of the engine casing and cracked the engine casing, completely cut through the body uh, belly pan, and uh, cracked the engine casing. And of course, all the oil came out. I saw it within just a few seconds. I, I looked in my rearview mirror and I could see smoke, dark smoke coming out of the exhaust. And I saw my oil pressure light come on the dash. So I immediately turned the motorcycle off and just coasted over to the side of the road. There wasn't much traffic, fortunately, but it did pretty extensive damage and uh, they had to rebuild my engine. They had to pull it out of the bike, rebuild the engine, the bottom of the engine. The pistons, rings, cylinders were all fine, uh, but they replaced the uh, bearing, main bearing, and the, uh, they didn't have to replace the crankshaft, but they replaced the bearings and the seals and the bottom engine case. And it was, it came out to about $12,500 worth of damage. And Dairyland uh, was very good about responding and paying for the damage. Uh, my dealer and my service department did an excellent job at Maxim Honda. I've told this story before that uh, John over there at Maxim Honda rebuilt my engine. He had the engine out of the bike in an afternoon. It was unbelievable. And if you've never seen a Goldwing that where you've pulled the engine out, it's something to behold. You've never seen so many cables and hoses and wires. You'd think they'll never get this thing back together. But the bike was out of service for about three weeks while they waited on parts to come in. And John rebuilt the engine. He's about a 20, 25 year Goldwing mechanic. Super good. He's the only person I let touch my bike. And I'm not kidding you, when he, when I got that bike back, there was only one issue, and that was with an accessory that I had installed. There was a ground wire that John had no idea, probably didn't even see it when he put everything back together, because I had a ton of accessories on this bike. But I was able to track it down pretty quick, got that ground wire hooked back up, and I mean, everything worked perfectly. The engine actually ran smoother and better than it did from the factory, and my gas mileage improved. I know it, does, it sounds impossible, but it's true. Uh, he did an incredible job rebuilding the engine. So basically, I had a brand new engine and uh, that ran better than it did new and I think I put 20,000 miles on the bike after he rebuilt the engine. That's my story for today. That's my insurance story. Dairyland came through. They paid the claim and they told me at the time if it had been an ec if it just been another 8 or 900 dollars on the claim, they would have had to have totaled my bike. So I was fortunately I didn't have to have it totaled and I got my brand new engine and my bike was ready to go and Dairyland came through. And here's the real moral to the story. It, I don't recall them raising my insurance rates as a result of that. Which is a, interesting because it was filed under my collision coverage. So anyway, I'm here at Grab a Gun in Coppell. I'm going to pick up my new handgun. And... I want to thank you for joining me today. I want to remind all of you, if you have a 2018 Honda Goldwing, check out our new Facebook group. I'll put a link on the video. I put the wrong link on the last video. I'll put the correct link on today. And I'll also put the link in the description of the video. 
So make sure you check out our new Facebook maintenance group for the 2018 Plus Honda Goldwing. Thanks again for joining me today, and I will see you next time on Cruise Man's Motor Vlogs. If you enjoyed this video, please take a second to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and that little bell icon so YouTube will notify you of new videos when they become available.